What's up, weirdos? Jojo Siwa is a villain? I mean, obviously she's cringe, but there's so much stuff that I didn't realize was going on beneath the surface. Because recently she announced that she's doing a rebrand, and it was very embarrassing looking for me. So I started to look into it, because I thought that could be a YouTube video. But then I realized there's so much dark stuff going on. So we'll talk about the rebrand. We'll talk about how cringe it is. But the stuff I found just by looking at that blew my mind, so I needed to share it with you. Just a quick list to talk about the things we're getting into. Exploitation of disabled children. That is, by the way, insane. But it is real, and I'm going to talk about why. Also, not just exploitation, but like bullying and potentially abuse. And then of course, cheating scandals, lying. And then I'll talk about the rebrand itself because there is a lot going on there. But let's start off on a positive note, talking about the exploitation of a young disabled child. Rolling Stone published an article with the title, Jojo Siwa promised them pop stardom. They say they were thrown in the trash. Basically, this article talks about how Jojo Siwa and her mom, Jessalyn, they formed a new child pop girl group. They were called XOMG pop exclamation point. But the disabled child that was exploited and bullied. Her name was Leia Sanderson. She's 16 now, but she was born with spina bifida. It's a birth defect. Your spine doesn't form properly. Her childhood was in and out of the hospital, dozens and dozens of surgeries. And she still struggles with chronic pain and like constant infections. It's terrible. Rolling Stone even quoted her as saying that the school nurse was her best friend growing up, which is sad. Anyways, Leia Sanderson danced a bunch and was able to join the XOMG pop girl group. But in order to do so, her mom, Angie, had to leave Texas and her other three children to move to Los Angeles with Leia. That's a big thing. That's asking a lot of somebody. And that was three years ago. So she was about, you know, 13, 14. Now, Jojo Siwa was famously on Dance Moms, which is a very toxic, horrible place. So you would think that if they were doing their own thing, the Siwas would have made it, you know, more positive and nice. But no! This whole thing is run by Jojo and her mom. So the decisions that are being made are equally on each other's shoulders. So in this stuff, Jojo's mom is just as much to blame. But here's the thing. They subjected the children to grueling rehearsals, sometimes foregoing school breaks with meager compensation. By the way, she moved to Texas to be with her kid. And they also forced the disabled child to work under intense physical duress. Now again, she can dance, but she is also a child who does have spina bifida. And Jojo Siwa's mom encouraged this disabled child to attend a video shoot a few weeks before she underwent spinal cord surgery. This is what's crazy. Days before the surgery, allegedly, I believe them, Leia started bleeding through her belly button during rehearsal for a performance. A performance hosted by Jojo. Did they encourage her to take a break though? No. She was told to put a maxi pad on it so it wouldn't leak onto the costume. This little disabled child who in a few days is gonna go get spinal cord surgery, started bleeding through her belly button, and they said, uh, put a pat on that and give me three more hours of rehearsal. Now, it does say that Jessalyn told her to do that, but what does it say next? According to sources on the production, Jojo also could be nasty and domineering. And at one point, they allege, she screamed insults at the girls during their performances. Not, come on, guys, do it, come on, come on. Not like trainer encouragement, screaming insults. Yeah, this girl right here, this girl was screaming insults at little children for not dancing good enough. Why? If you look like this, focus on yourself. Oh, she's rebranded. She looks differently now. This is her now. I got a question. If you could have one heaven phone call, this is a random heaven phone call, okay? Nothing. Okay, we get it. You have the fake tattoos on your arm. By the way, those are fake tattoos. Those are not real tattoos. Look at this. Oh, these tattoos. Oh, they're all ink box temporary tattoos. Oh, oh. This is who we're talking about here. This Pat McAfee knockoff. The article also talks about how she played a role in building a cutthroat environment long after the cameras were gone, which I guess makes sense in a reality TV competition if it's all about who's going to be in the group and not. But were the contestants told that it would be a cutthroat competition show? No. Angie, the mother of the disabled girl who moved from Texas with her disabled child for this opportunity believed the show was going to be more of a making the band style like reality show about the band coming together. Not a competition show. Now, the production says, we always said it was a competition show. Of course they say that shit though. They're always lying for these types of things. I can't tell you how many times throughout the article it just says, uh, the representative for the CWAS said, nah, -uh. we were nice the whole time. And then the article will say, many sources on the production actually said that the CWAS were horrible. And that's what happens here. Two sources close to the production who spoke with Rolling Stone on the condition of anonymity confirmed the production team had sold the show as a kinder, gentler version of Dance Moms. And one of the sources is quoted as saying, with what Jess and Jojo went through on Dance Moms, we thought they wouldn't want to do anything that would make a child feel a certain way or paint them in a certain light, one said. Also, these same sources sent dozens of documents and a bunch of like contractual agreements, text messages, screenshots, emails to Rolling Stones when they wrote this article. And these sources talk about how the Siwas and the producers were dangling the carrot of fame in front of these young girls and then would 
berate them and encourage them to cry on camera. But first, real quick, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Aura. I hate to tell you, but your data is out there. Your full name, email, home address, phone number, your health records is all out there. And data brokers are out here selling your information to scammers, spammers, anybody who wants to target you. But that's what's so great is about Aura, is you have the right to submit opt-out requests to these places to stop these data brokers from selling your information. You have that right. But if you were to do it by yourself, it would take years. Seriously, there's so much out there and I can't possibly do it by myself. But Aura automatically submits those opt-out requests. It has helped me reduce so much of the spam that I get. But not only that, it protects me from hackers, people who could use my information to get, you know, important things. Bank accounts, social media, stuff like that. But also Aura does a lot more than just that to protect you from online threats. It's also got antivirus, VPN, password management. It's always on. It's always helping keep you safe. And it makes me feel so much more secure with my online privacy. You can go to Aura.com slash Film Cooper and start your two week free trial. I'll also put that link in my description. Aura.com forward slash Film Cooper or click the link in my description. Thank you so much to Aura for sponsoring this video. Now back to the other stuff. And according to one of these sources this close to the production, a common saying among the producers on this set, this set again, where there's these young kids, the producers would say, it's not a good day unless you make a kid cry. And the mom of the disabled child confirmed that she'd heard such a comment from the producer as well. And another source who spoke to them said, I don't know if I've heard that thing specifically, but such a remark was consistent with the atmosphere on set. It's not a good day unless you make a kid cry. It's consistent with the atmosphere on set. Jojo Siwa, what the fuck are you doing making a show where it's commonplace on set to talk about trying to make kids cry? But basically what ended up happening is Angie, Leia's mom, was complaining to the other parents of the other children in XOMG Pop about how horrible this whole experience was and the you know, insanely long hours, the abuse that their children were being subjected to, the horrible environment of growing up, like venting, talking about all these things, and it ended up as a big confrontation between her and the other moms. And when Jojo and her mom found out about it, Jojo's mom, Jessalyn, was texting Angie saying that she's wrong, she's crazy, none of this stuff is happening, you're wrong, they're not overworked, you're wrong. So gaslighting her. And then shortly thereafter, Leia was fired. She ended up being terminated and is no longer in XMO. Come on, also, before we move on, a lot of this has been on like Jessalyn, like Jessalyn has done a lot of these things. She kind of does all the dirty work for Jojo. Her mom is a little bit like the Duncan Idaho to Duke Leto Atreides. Anyways, according to Angie Sanderson, Leia's mom, and three sources close to the production, the cast was under the impression that XOMG Pop was intended to give Jessalyn, Jojo's mom, a project while Jojo launched the next more mature phase of her career, the rebrand. The vibe of it was like, let me give my mommy new little dolls to play with so I can stop wearing the bows and have a life. That is very sad and it makes me feel bad for Jojo. But you know what? Doesn't make me feel bad for Jojo. Running a show where the vibe of the set is, hey, if a kid doesn't cry today, that's bad. But if a kid does cry, oh, that's a good day. Come on, every single day. Yeah, if you are partners with your mom and you're screaming and berating kids, and then your mom also screams and berates kids and does more things that are bad, but you guys are making the decisions together, your mom's just the one who's saying the decisions. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that you are just as bad. However, that line about giving her new dolls to play with is very unsettling. So that's the first thing, the exploitation and abuse of a disabled child. I say abuse. You know, this is all alleged. The Jojo Siwas have denied this. But it's Rolling Stone and there's many sources close to the production and a lot of corroborating stories and evidence that was sent to Jojo. So, yeah, I'd feel like I was suffering abuse if I went through what that disabled child went through on set. So I feel like you can say that. So according to the Rolling Stone article, abuse and exploitation of a young disabled child. But is that enough of a reason to kickstart your rebrand? Well, let's look into the lyrics of her new song of this rebrand. Karma. Yeah, I would say that exploiting a disabled child is a bad thing, Jojo Siwa. Good lyric, though. Hey, good lyric! I was a bad girl. She had spina bifida and was a child and I exploited her. Yeah, I think it doesn't really flow. I should leave the lyricism to Jojo Siwa. Jojo Siwa! Come on, every single day. Oh my god, very true, Jojo Siwa. Karma really is a bitch. Hey, that little disabled girl bled through her belly button before her surgery and got it all over my dress. I paid for that dress, bitch! You disabled little runt, you better put a maxi pad over that bleeding belly button before your surgery and get back on the dance floor! And guess what, you're fired! Yeah, that's right, Karma's a bitch! Jojo, Jojo! But by the way, this is my favorite part of this little clip. Watch her dance move right here, it's amazing. Excuse my baggy green cords, but this? 
like that? I gotta be honest, it goes hard. Especially when you're dressed literally like Pat McAfee. You might not know who Pat McAfee is, but look, that's who she looks like. That's what she's dressed like. But yeah, that is her rebrand. She's no longer this child star just for little girls. She's a grown adult who dresses like grown girls do. I beg the Fox execs. I, I've begged them so much to do a mass Singer All-Stars. I can't even listen to what you're saying right now, Jojo. Jojo, what is this? I can't even talk about it. I don't know what this vest is. It's 17 layers of sequins. There's folds that I don't even know where they end. She's got one, two, three, six chains. Listen, I'll layer a couple necklaces available right now at weirdothings.com. They're high quality. Real pearls, real gemstones, sterling silver class, high quality shit. And the glasses, I'm not even gonna begin. I don't even know what's happening. Those Call of Duty Oakley skin looking motherfuckers, why are you wearing them? By the way, this is not a rebrand. This is just the exact same style that she's been doing before, but instead of for little girls, it's maximalist white trash lesbian, which is fine. Hey, 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 no hate out here for any maximalist white trash lesbian. But I think if you're gonna be horrible to a disabled child, you know, it's worth pointing out. I'm just serious. If it was serious, I'd call grandma, grandpa, uncle, I never got to meet someone. I don't know what the hell she's talking about. I'm just trying to show you what she looks like now. This is her rebrand. We had the Miley Cyrus rebrand. We had the Ariana Gr- Ariana Gr <laughs> Plenty of child stars have done this, but the thing is, this is Jijisiwa. And when you rebrand from your excessively childlike persona that you kept up well into your late teens, and the rebrand is just this, I just don't know what you think is gonna happen for you. Karma's a bitch, you shouldn't have spina bifida. No, but the thing is, that song probably isn't about the disabled child with spina bifida that bled through her dress and was told to put a maxi pad on it. <laughs> I think obviously it wasn't that, but it was potentially about cheating. That's the other thing that I wanted to talk about. Jijisiwa is a cheater. Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. Okay, honestly, this is about to get very confusing and interwoven as many lesbian love disaster webs end up being. I'm gonna try to make it clear for you though. There's a girl named Avery who was in a relationship with a girl named Soph. Long-term relationship between Avery and Soph. Avery blindsided Soph, allegedly, with a breakup that Soph did not see come. So Avery breaks up with Soph, gets into a relationship with Jojo. Now Avery and Jojo were together. Now Jojo had recently broken up with, I know, Kai. Now if my memory serves me correctly, Jojo and Kai was Jojo's first queer relationship that was public. Cause she lesbian. So they had recently broken up and then Jojo and Avery got together. So they both have breakups, both get together. So Jojo and Avery were together until they abruptly broke up. And what had happened is that Avery and Soph, remember Soph? They had planned a vacation prior to them breaking up and Avery still wanted to go. So she went on a trip with her ex. And then Jojo comes out and thinks that she was used for clout. So she's saying stuff like that because like, okay, you just date me to get famous and then you go back with your ex. Oh, really? But then, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Strap up. Remember how Jojo had broken up with Kai? Kai then had another girlfriend who said that Jojo and Kai, while Jojo was in a relationship with Avery, were getting together. So Kai and Jojo were allegedly getting together while Jojo was in a relationship with Avery. And then Avery goes on that trip. Basically, the moral of that story is Jojo thinks that Avery was using her for clout. But then while with Avery, she allegedly was cheating on her with Kai, her ex. But then Avery was going on a vacation with her ex, and that's what her song is about. Karma's a bitch, I should've known better. better. I did also probably cheat on you. That'd be a good lyric. Karma's a bitch, and I'm gonna face it. Man, I'm not a good singer. By the way, look at this video that Avery posted. By the way, so sorry for giving you that information, so you're gonna have to live with it forever. It's so useless. But this is what Avery posted on TikTok recently. <laughs> And somebody commented that, Jojo Siwa, uh, how you feel? And she said, not her, <laughs> damn. Feels like a cheating situation, feels like it. Also, they posted these videos, I think right after their breakup, and you know, it, it just seems very weird. Come on, everything is Yeah, so people took that as her coming out and saying that she doesn't like Jojo Siwa's. I don't want to even, oh my God, I don't feel like I should be talking about this. But people were saying, you know, people say euphemisms for the V, the big V, as like a Arby's roast beef sandwich if it's bad. So her doing that and then Jojo posting this. So everybody kind of interpreted that as Avery saying, I don't like Jojo Siwa's V. And then Jojo Siwa says, you ate it. Ah, why am I talking about this? This is not, no. God dang it, this is, ah. Keep this shit offline. Like don't say this shit online. It's so weird. Also, you want to see another clip of Jojo Siwa and her new rebrand? This is three weeks ago talking about some very, like, I don't know why she's talking about this type of things. I actually have two tattoos dedicated to him. Um, this one's dedicated to my baby girl one day. Her name is uh, Freddie. 
Then this is dedicated twin boys, Eddie and Teddy. Um, <laughs> Freddie, Eddie, and Teddie. Freddie, Eddie, and Teddie. I got, I want awesome. three babies. I have my sperm donor lined up. So she's 20 years old with temporary tattoos talking about how they're for her future kids. If she's got a sperm donor lined up. This is not the edgy cool girl rebrand. I'm grown up now. This is what I think grown ups talk about type of rebrand. This is not how grown ups dress and this is not how grown ups talk. If it was serious, I'd call grandma, grandpa. If you want to rebrand and be like some bad girl, this is not the way to do it. And I think it's just because this is just not who she is. Or who she is is not a successful rebrand as a bad girl. This is who she is. A Pat McAfee knockoff with a complicated lesbian relationship timeline, which is basically just Pat McAfee. But really, this is all small potatoes. Like the rebrand, this other stuff that's like several. The thing that she did that the article is written about, that is why I want to talk about it first. Because what? Her rebrand makes no sense. It's completely miscalculated. She's doing it completely wrong. It's embarrassing to look at, it's embarrassing to watch, especially when you know the backstory about how karma is a bitch. Karma is a bitch. Well, actually, you are the one who should be facing karma because you were the quote, quote, bitch. And again, that's not me saying it. That's me quoting her lyric and that she should face karma. So that must mean, I still don't like, no, if you exploit a disabled child, you're a bitch. I'm sorry. You are, you are. Don't bully disabled children. Otherwise I'm gonna call you a bitch. So that's, did you see what? Well, I hope you feel a little bit too informed about this situation and you have some memories that will never be able to escape you. Please subscribe. Karma's a bitch. I should have known better. Something about how I like to wear leather and chains on my chains. Chains and gemstones and rhinestones and too much glitter. I'll wear Oakleys that are clear and a sleeveless tank top with sequins because I'm a woman and that's what women do. Oh, I'm a woman, so I wear sequins and leather pants.